Middleton, Colorado, and welcome to another short message from the Word of God. And of course, that's the important thing that we can share together, is what God has to say through His Word. And so we're going to read together a, a tremendous portion of Scripture that I love, and I know a lot of you will recognize and love it as well. But it comes from the book of Romans. Paul, as he's writing to the Roman church, is concerned about their well-being, and he writes this letter. And he starts in chapter 8 with this verse which says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to elaborate this absolutely marvelous demonstration about grace. Now we're going to read from chapter 8 of Romans. Chapter 8, and we're going to start reading at verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 got your Bibles, you might enjoy reading as because after the, the message, hopefully you'll have an opportunity to go back, read it, read the whole chapter, chapter 8. It's wonderful, but we don't have enough time for that today, but Romans chapter 8, verse 35, and Paul writes this question, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What a wonderful way to end this chapter. But it's a tremendous, tremendous chapter to read. So I commend it to you for your consideration. Now, Paul, as he's writing these words, he writes to them, from the perspective of his appreciation of who it is that he's speaking to. And he says, or speaking about, and he says here in this middle verse, and I would suggest to you that, at least for me today, as I share with you, this middle verse here is one to focus on. Verse 37, but in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. We overwhelmingly conquer. Part of the understanding and of appreciation of us as believers and overwhelmingly conquer is to consider who it is. It's in Christ who loved us. And then we begin to say, well, it's helpful if we can be uh, understanding and appreciative of who he is. And I suggest to you, it is hard to get our heads around the tremendous person of the Lord Jesus. He is indeed indescribable. It reminds me of when the astronauts on Apollo 8 went up to the moon and they went around the moon and when they came on the other side of the dark side of the moon and coming back and looking at the earth, they saw this tremendously beautiful globe in the, in the, in the universe. And they read from Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it must have been a moment that would have taken their breath away. The moon so stark and gray. And yet to look at the earth in all of its beauty, what God had created. And we know from Genesis, it says that God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That we know that he made the sun, the, the life of the day and the life of the night. And so he made the sun, and all, uh, which enables all of this universe to, uh, that we live in to exist and to grow. And the sun, of course, is the source of light for us. And light is an interesting thing because it travels at 186,000 miles a second, a little faster than my Hyundai. 186,000 miles a second. And... Um, when the light leaves the sun and comes to the earth, 
it takes about eight minutes to get here. To understand the sense of light and its speed and what God has made, if you had a light and you put it and you had the light go around the earth, it could go around the earth seven times in one second. That's how fast the speed of light is. In order to understand light, understand distances, understand this universe, man has had to turn around and put it into some terminologies that they can kind of comprehend a little bit. So when we think about this universe, we think about it and the size of it in terms of light years rather than miles. Now, you and I deal with, well, some of you deal with kilometers. We deal with miles over here. So uh, the number of miles that you have in one light year is 5.88 trillion miles. Now, that's another number that's hard to comprehend for many of us. Understanding what a trillion is, only our governments understand that. And that is, of course, how they count their debt. But 5.88 trillion miles is a light year. The closest galaxy to us is the Andromeda galaxy. In order to understand the size of that galaxy, it is 100,000 light years across. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is also about 100,000 light years across. When we think of the, the magnitude of these things and how to understand, it's all, it's all in the hands of the great creator. Now, Colossians 1, 15 to 17 says this, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of the preeminent of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and in the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. How tremendous is that? All things have been created through him and for him. And so this one who we're challenged to think about in terms of our own overcoming, this one whom we rely upon, he's the one who holds all things together. Now, the psalmist also had a great appreciation of who this was. When I consider your heavens, he writes, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him and the son of man that you care for him? That's Psalm 8. So when we pause and consider who this is that we are dependent upon for our help, and our encouragement. He is the one who has created all things and holds all things together. No wonder Paul writes these words in Romans that we've been able to read together. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Who is it that will do that? Who can compare to the Lord Jesus? Who can compare to this indescribable one who is your savior and my Savior. Recently, of course, we've been rejoicing and enjoying the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. How powerful and wonderful that is. Your Savior and mine, who not only laid down his life and gave his life for us because he loved us, but after three days arose and has ascended to the right hand of the majesty on high. What a tremendous Savior we have. He is the creator of all things and hold all things together. And Paul writes, who will separate us from the love of Christ? And then he lays out some issues here. As we look at this portion of scripture, he lays out some issues about a list of dangers or things that probably the early disciples were very concerned about. Things that would have impacted them and concerned them. And so he goes through and he speaks of things like tribulation and distress. Now, in their world, they would have been feeling the, the tribulation of the Roman Empire and suppression and all the rest of that that they would have gone through. 
they would have been feeling the same way because the Jewish people would have been in opposition to them as believers and, and, and those who hold Christ as Lord and Son of God. But we are in similar situations today in our world. And we're facing tribulation and distress, tribulation all over the world. There's all kinds of question marks about whether governments are going to even survive, about businesses surviving. There's tremendous tribulation, but there's also tremendous distress. As we think of the COVID-19 virus and its impact on so many lives all around the world, I know here in the United States, there's uh, the social distancing and efforts are being made to reduce the contacts. And it's happening all over our country. It's happening all over the world. And it's distressful. It is something that causes us to be uncomfortable. It causes us a whole change of lifestyle. It causes us to worry about whether or not we might get it. And do we have the complications in life that are going to end our lives? All of these things come in, even though as believers, we have a confidence and a trust in the Lord Jesus. There's still that aspect of distress, just like they had distress. But Paul is writing, is distress, tribulation, going to separate us from the love of Christ? He goes on to talk about persecution. They would have had tremendous persecution. We fortunately, in our country, don't have persecution against us as Christians, other than those who would mock us for what we believe. But there's so many other parts of the world where believers in the Lord Jesus are truly being persecuted. And he speaks of famine and nakedness, not having enough food or not having enough clothing, not having enough uh, house to take care of you or somewhere to dwell. And all of those things would have been a concern, but all of those things have no impact on the love of Christ for us or peril or sword. They faced the reality that they could have lost their life. I, I was thinking the other day about the disciples. They were back after the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, and they were all together, and they were worried about their own persecution of what was going to take place with them. And so that was the difficulty. But how thankful we are that oh, in our day and age, at least in our country, and I'm sure in many of the countries of those who will be watching this, um, there's not that kind of persecution. But he says, he says in this, we are being put to death. It's a quote from Psalm 44, but we are being put to death. So Christians indeed suffer. So we're not immune for that. But the verse that I want to again emphasize to you is uh, this verse. And it says, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. That's our basis of conquering. That's our basis of overcoming. It's through him. It's not through our own strength. It's not through our own power. It's through him, the Lord Jesus Christ, and how thankful we should be that we have one who loves us, and through his love and power, we're able to overcome. Now, Paul continues in his writing, and he says, I am convinced. I love this confidence that you get. When you read through this portion of scripture, you're overwhelmed at Paul's conviction. The thought here is his belief in his conviction about what he is saying to the Roman saints. And he says, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love which is in Christ, the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a statement. Nothing can separate us. And then he goes through another list again. And he goes through this list and explains on this list things that might have been concerning to them and might be concerning to us and may cross our minds, even as believers in the Lord Jesus. And particularly, I think, as we find ourselves so isolated and uh, separated from our brothers and sisters in Christ, and those times when we're so given a sense of confidence with each other and in the word and spending time with the Lord. Well, he writes this and he says, neither death nor life, neither death nor life will separate us 
from the love of God. So it doesn't matter if you die or whether in this life, because when you think about what the Lord has done for us, the scripture says, you have been bought with a price, not a silver or gold or costly stones, but by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus, you've been bought with a price. And the scripture says, you're not your own. Whether you live or whether you die, you are the Lord's. How powerful and wonderful that is. We're not on our own and we're not alone. And we're not of ourselves. We are ones who belong to him and how thankful we should be for that. So neither death nor life can separate us from the love of God. Then he says, neither angels nor principalities. So now he's looking at the, the realm of the spirit world possibly and he's saying it doesn't matter about the things that are in in this world or out of this world that cannot separate you from the love of god things that are present are things that are come so what's happening to us presently going through the virus going through the isolation going through potential depression and difficulties and i would just plead with you that if you're feeling those things that you get a hold of your brothers and sisters and share with them and share with each other to encourage each other at the times that we're going through. And so he says to them, whether it's things present or things in the future, that's not for us to worry about. That's not for us to be concerned about because we are the Lord's and we belong to him. And there is nothing that's going to separate you or I from the love of God. Nor powers which is probably earthly or spiritually, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. No other created thing. I love that particular line because what happens to us sometimes is we say, well, I understand that and I understand that, that, but what about, but what about, but what about, but he covers it all. No other created thing will separate you or I from the love of God. How thankful we should be. What a powerful portion of scripture. I encourage you please to enjoy going through and reading that again. Now, we're coming close to the end of our time. Uh, I want us to go to 1 Peter chapter 1, please. 1 Peter chapter 1. And there's some scriptures here and have some similar thoughts to what we've seen in Paul. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Those of us who are believers are protected by the power of God through faith. In this, you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while. If necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. So even though there is some of that distress that has taken place, it's only for a little while, thankfully, and thank the Lord for that. So that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is imperishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as to the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What a powerful and wonderful portion of scripture. I encourage you to contemplate and think about what has been sh shared by Peter as he thought about contemplating this person of the Lord Jesus and how we have been granted so much blessing in him. And it says that you may be found to, as a result in praise, glory, and honor 
at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So may it be that your life will be enjoyable. Hang in there. Enjoy the word and share your faith and encourage each other and share with each other the wonderful confidence that we have in the Lord Jesus, this one who for us is the indescribable one, the great creator of all things. May the Lord bless you, encourage you, and keep you going for his name's sake. Amen. Mm -hmm.